Once upon a time, a man named Horace Smith and another man named Daniel Wesson were walking merrily through a park on a nice spring day when they literally bumped into each other. Horace complained that Daniel had gotten chocolate in his peanut butter. Daniel retorted that Horace had smeared peanut butter all over his chocolate. Despite this rather volcanic first encounter, they discovered they had a lot in common, especially their love of firearms. Well, the rest, as they say, is history. But somewhere along the line, between then and now, the Performance Center was born. This is where standard models of Smith & Wesson guns are given a nice spa day and some upgrades. Some are cosmetic, but most are intended to increase the performance of the gun, as the name suggests. Night sights, a fancier box, match-grade barrel, and above all, a smoother, crisper trigger are common upgrades. I'm usually not real big on external safeties on a striker-fired handgun, as I've said in the past, but I don't mind them being there. It doesn't bother me. It's still my choice whether I want to use that control or not. In this case, Smith & Wesson has provided us with a very nice ambidextrous safety, and it works beautifully. So I got to say, I don't mind it. I'm probably going to use it more than not. One of my favorite things about this particular safety, and I'll talk more about some of my other favorite things, but one of my favorite things from a practical standpoint is that you can engage the safety, in other words, have it on safe with the slide back, and you can load and chamber around with the safety on. And that gives you another level of safety at the range, at home, in your car, wherever you might be having to manipulate and load your gun. The most dangerous part of air travel is takeoffs and landings, right? Well, very similarly, the most dangerous time handling your guns is loading and unloading. And so when you can do that with the safety engaged, that in my book is a huge, huge plus. All right, so enough of that. Very first shots with the Performance Center M&P 10 millimeter. Okay, I'll take that as a first shot every time. All right, well, it was 15, and uh, those plates don't always flip when they're hit, even with a 10 millimeter. Okay, back to it. And I'm going to try to do just that. Try to tell you what I'm liking or maybe not liking about the gun. So one of the things that a lot of people I know don't like about a safety on a gun is you've got to keep your thumb basically on top of it or else you're probably going to put it back in safe because your thumb's under it. Especially with something like a 10 millimeter that's going to buck a little bit when you shoot it. There's also a special performance center roll mark on the slide to set it apart. For the M&P 10mm, Smith & Wesson made a wise decision to add a ported barrel and slide for the PC version. But does it really make a difference? That was something I wanted to try and answer in this review, and I think I can. But first, let's give the gun a good look over and talk about its specs and features. It starts with a longer barrel at 5.6 inches. That barrel is stainless steel, and it contains two ports near the muzzle to direct the gases straight up. The overall length of the gun is 8.6 inches. 
It stands 5.6 inches tall and weighs 31.4 ounces. The gun comes with two 15 round magazines. The slide is optics ready with several adapter plates provided with the gun. The sights are tall night sights made of steel. The three tritium dots sit up nice and high and should co-witness with just about every red dot optic. The sight picture is very good for easy acquisition and shooting in any kind of light or even in total darkness. It's equipped with an ambidextrous thumb safety that feels and functions almost exactly like a 1911 safety. Also ambidextrous is the slide stop slide release control. This control has been greatly improved and it's easy to use to drop the slide to load a chamber. Like all M&P handguns, it has that comfortable and natural 18 degree angle and it comes with multiple palm swell back straps so that you can customize it to fit your hand size. It also has the M&P sear release lever that allows you to disassemble the gun for cleaning without having to pull the trigger. The recoil spring is captured on an all metal guide rod. Okay, so uh, same, pretty much same exact sight picture as on the regular M&P. The difference being that these are night sights, they have the tritium vial whereas the others don't. The trigger is really, really nice. Now I like the trigger on the other M&P anyway, but I think this one might be a little bit crisper. They have done a really nice job tweaking that so that it's been working really consistently on the last several M&Ps that I've, you know, M2.0s that I've shot. So that's a big, that's a big plus. Of course you have the great grip texture. That's also the same. Okay, now it is time for the comparison that I intended to do when I came here between the M&P Performance Center 10 millimeter and the regular M&P M2.0 10 millimeter. So the, the big difference, obviously, just looking at the two guns side by side that you notice immediately is that the Performance Center gun is compensated. There are cuts in the barrel out front. There are two of them and they are straight up. So the idea is to release the gas straight up and help drive the muzzle down. And then there are corresponding cuts in the slide to obviously allow that gas to escape even before the barrel has fully cleared the slide, or actually before the slide has cleared the barrel. So the question obviously then becomes, can we actually quantify that there's less felt recoil with the compensated barrel versus the standard barrel? Now, this barrel has another inch of length too, which makes some degree of difference, but you know, I don't want to split a lot of hairs. Mantis X makes a great product I've used before. If you've watched the channel, you may have seen me do this test before. This will measure the muzzle rise, and it's also going to measure not only how much did it rise, but how much did it move side to side. It'll, it'll actually show you <laughs> what your muzzle did during during the shot and when you see that on a graph you're going to go oh my god <laughs> I've got no control over this pistol whatsoever it's like a spirograph but it is a whole lot better than me just saying well I think this one feels about the same or this one feels lighter and you know, all that if you can measure it you should measure it so let's measure it I'm going to do five shots of each I am shooting six hour elite performance ammo and it's the ball ammo not the hollow point but it is rated at 
1,250, 1,250 feet per second. So it's a, it's a good stout load and that should be a nice test. In theory, the hotter the load, the more benefit you're going to get from the ports. All right, so I'm going to measure all five of these and then I'll talk about them and we'll compare. All right. So I'm going to do some uh, screen captures here with my phone. I have the app running on my phone. Okay, it shows me all my averages, and then there's a little graph there. And we'll look at all these on screen. Put the Mantis device on the other M&P. and can test five rounds with this one. Okay, so I can see um, that the average recovery time was higher. Yeah, this is a really cool app. I'll talk to you a little bit more about it back from the, the studio, but uh, it's, a, it's a great little app and it is so handy to have to do some real measurements. Let's look at the recoil test. I used the Manus X recoil measuring tool and the app. And this great little device lets me see what my muzzle's doing during the shot. It measures four key data points for each shot and it calculates an average of each point. The two I'm most interested in are average recovery time, which is how long it takes the muzzle to return to level after the shot breaks, and the muzzle rise. For the PC version, the average recovery time was 0.58 seconds, and the average muzzle rise was 22.65 degrees. The regular M&P measured 0.62 seconds average recovery time and a 28.79 degree average muzzle rise. The Performance Center gun reduced recoil impact by 6.5% on recovery time and a pretty huge 21% for muzzle rise. The ported barrel is measurably more effective even in my not quite laboratory type testing. All right, I'm gonna test accuracy in, in my way, which is just offhand shooting. 12 yards is the distance to that target. I know it's usually 13, which is my lucky distance, but I'm cheating today. I brought it in to 12. 10 rounds of the SIG ammo. 180 grain, 1,250 feet per second. Round nose flat point. Just see how well I can shoot this gun. Felt that one get away from me. All right, that was 10 rounds. And I can see from here that I have two that I'm not real proud of. The rest of them look like they're, uh, they're where they ought to be. So I will say while, I'm, while it's on my mind and I just got done shooting those 10 rounds, the trigger, I think, is really what helped me 
shoot a nice group because it's just so crisp and it was just so easy to break that trigger and keep the gun steady and on target, you know, which can be hard to do when you're doing slow fire at a paper target. I enjoy shooting 10 millimeter. I don't enjoy paying for the ammo, but I really do like to shoot it. My previous review of the M&P 10 millimeter was very favorable, and I think that the Performance Center has done a great job of making a really nice gun even better. So who's it for? Probably not for concealed carry. It's a full-size gun and then some. But it could certainly be used as a duty weapon and absolutely for home defense. If you like to compete with 10 millimeter, and some people do, it's a good gun for that too. And it can give you a competitive edge with recoil management. All right, wrapping things up here at the range with the 10 millimeter M&P Performance Center Edition from Smith & Wesson. It is a sweet, sweet gun and one heck of a shooter. All right, here's just a quick visual comparison, head to head, literally, uh, of the two. This is the regular M&P 10 millimeter and M2.0, of course, both in both cases. And this is the Performance Center version. So you can see I, I lined them up with the rear sights and the front sight. Front sights and rear sights match up dead perfect. So, you know, really from, from here back, everything is identical physically. And the difference is that extra inch or so of barrel out front where we have our ports. And the other difference as we look top down is that the performance center has the ambidextrous safety. And the safety is an option for the regular M2.0 M&Ps. And the last difference, of course, is the sights. They are configured the same way. They both have the tall sights. They're both co-witnessable through your optic. But the Performance Center gives you tritium inserts, so you have night sights on the Performance Center, and that's not a standard feature on the 2.0 M&P. Smith & Wesson doesn't give us a trigger pull spec, so I'm going to measure that myself. Five pounds, 10 ounces. Five pounds, five ounces. Five pounds, seven ounces. Just do an average of the three. Five pounds, seven and a half ounces, which is almost exactly five and a half pounds. And then there are those of us who just really like 10 millimeter and M&Ps. If you're a fan of the brand, this is one to put on your list for sure. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I like to read them and I like to chime in on the discussion. You can really support the channel and help keep the content flowing by hitting the like button and being a subscriber. I'm also on Patreon if you want to support me that way and you usually get early access to most videos like this one and some Patreon exclusives. Look in the description of this video and you'll see several discount codes and affiliate links. You can save significant money on products that I use and recommend. Keep in mind some of these are affiliates and your purchase also helps my channel. And if you think this video was especially helpful to you or you just want to say thanks, there's a button for that right below the video on YouTube. It's YouTube Thanks. It's kind of like leaving a tip if you think you got good service. This is just an opinion. Thanks for watching.